XD is Adobe's contribution to the world of design mock-up software. And in XD, as with any concept design tool, it's really important to be able to illustrate how your layouts are going to respond at the different widths that they're going to need to be functional at. In this course, you'll learn about the specific elements of XD's functionality that can be used to help you with your responsive design processes. I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks for XD to help you with your layout, both in general and with responsive design. And then I'm gonna show you through a practical demonstration of creating a multiple artboard mock-up of a responsive wireframe site. By the end of this course, you're gonna know exactly how to produce a complete responsive mock-up in Adobe XD. So let's go ahead and get started on responsive design in Adobe XD. I'll see you in the first lesson. Hey, I'm Kes Bracey for Tuts Plus. Welcome to responsive design in Adobe XD. So before we get into actually working with XD, I just wanna give you a couple of quick videos to refresh what it is that we're actually talking about when we are discussing responsive design. What does it actually mean? And when you're reading up on this topic, you can find all kinds of different theories and recommendations, but it really boils down to just two relatively simple things. When you're creating responsive design, all you really need to think about are columns and content. And even content itself is really just more column management, which is something that you're gonna see as we move on through this course. So what do I mean when I say that responsive design is just columns and content? Isn't it to do with mobile devices and making sure things are touch friendly and all those sorts of things? Well, yes and no. The reason that I say that you only really need to think about columns and content is because at this point in time, mobile devices are so ubiquitous that you should always consider that every single site that you create needs to be workable with mobile. So everything needs to have touch controls, but at the same time, things need to work for desktop computers as well. So everything needs to have mouse friendly controls. So you can take that as a given and sort of put it off to the side. So then in that case, we're really talking about layout when we talk about responsive design. So how is it that layout can all just boil down to columns and content? Well, the reason is that all websites, at least the vast majority, scroll vertically. And because we have vertical scrolling, really nobody cares how high your site is. You can just keep scrolling your content through as much as you need to to get through it. So your content being a non-specified height, it doesn't really matter. It's not really important. However, what is important is that we have a fixed width. Any given device, any given viewport is at one time a fixed width, but you don't know what that width is. So that is the part that you have to manage. And when we manage width, we do it via columns. So that is why responsive layout design is first and foremost a matter of controlling columns. Inside those columns, you have all of your content. So that's why the second point is making sure that the content that you have fits well inside the columns that you have. All right, so if responsive design basically comes down to columns and content, then what do we need to think about in regards to columns and content? Well, the first thing that you wanna think about is making sure that as far as possible, your columns are fluid width. So for example, you might have a column that can start at 1200 pixels wide and it can shrink all the way down to say 300 pixels wide. That column is then useful across that entire spectrum of width. Obviously in some cases you'll have more than one column. So you might have a three column layout those columns can be flexible. And typically the process is gonna be that as the columns shrink in width, you leave them as they are until the content inside those columns is no longer legible. At that point, you're gonna discard one or more of those columns. So you might go from a three column layout down to a two column layout or a one column layout. That gives your content more room to retain its legibility. So the essential process with any given responsive layout is you're gonna start with multiple columns, and you repeat that process of shrinking and discarding columns until you end up with one single column and all your content stacked vertically. But in the same way that you can have fluid width columns, you can also have fluid width content. So an obvious example is you can have a block of text that's easily able to expand or shrink its width, and then the text just reflows accordingly. You also wanna make sure that your images can have flexible width wherever possible so that they continue to fit inside whatever space they have. Some content is more difficult to make completely fluid. For example, a navigation menu, a horizontal navigation menu, often has a relatively fixed width. And where this is the case, where you can't just sort of easily squash down content, then you need to think about where it's positioned relative to the edges of your viewport as you start to shrink down that width. So using that navigation menu example again, let's say you have a horizontal navigation menu, it's in your header on the right side. You need to make sure that as you're shrinking down the design, that navigation menu stays pinned on the right side of your layout. 
And here is where content is in a lot of ways, just like your layout columns. When you don't have enough room for your content, you often need to collapse it into a single column. For example, when you have a horizontal menu layout, each one of those menu items is basically an individual column. And when there's not enough room for them anymore, you collapse those columns down to a single column and you stack your menu items one on top of the other. So it's that same process. You start with a certain number of columns, you shrink them down when there's no more room, you collapse things down to a single column. And then the last major consideration in regards to adjusting your content responsively is changing font size to work well at different viewport sizes. Typically, this just refers to reducing the size of headings. And that's something that you're going to see in action as we move through this course. So let's bring that all back to a couple of simple key principles. So all you need to think about when you're doing responsive design, whether it's in XD or any other platform, is your site's columns and the width of those columns, adjusting your content so that it fits inside those columns. And when there's no longer enough room for the content to fit inside the columns, reducing column counts until you end up with one single column and all of your content stacked vertically. And then boiling that down even further, Coming back to our key point, responsive design is all about columns and content. And if you think about those two things, you're going to end up with a perfectly responsive website. All right, so that's part one of our responsive refresher. In part two of the responsive refresher, we're going to talk briefly about implementing those two tasks that we talked about. What is the overall workflow that you should step through when you're creating a responsive design? How should you handle working with breakpoints? And do we still use the mobile first methodology? We're going to talk about that very quickly in the next video. I'll see you there. Hey, this is Kez. Welcome back to Responsive Design in Adobe XD. We're kicking off our course with a quick refresher on responsive design. In part one of the refresher, we talked about what responsive design actually is and that it just boils down to two things, and that is managing columns and content. In part two, this video, we are going to briefly talk about how to put that into action. So what your actual workflow is going to be inside XD. We're going to talk about breakpoints, how you should be handling breakpoints, and the question of, do we still do the mobile first methodology? All right, now, obviously, XD itself is not a website. It's not an actual website. So you're not going to be able to create a fully functional responsive site inside this software. What you can do is create a series of artboards and those artboards are going to depict how the design should look at various widths. And one approach that's very common here, and this is something that I do not recommend, is just picking out specific devices and only designing mockups for those specific device widths. So for example, doing something at 1200 pixels wide to represent a desktop, 1024 to represent a tablet and 320 to represent a phone. Even though this might seem like an intuitive way to approach responsive design, there are some problems that can arise from using that approach. The first problem with this approach is that it leaves a fairly high likelihood that your layout can break down at spots in between those arbitrary sizes. So let's say, like I said, you have 1200, 1024 and 320. Your layout then might just break down at say 1100 pixels or 800 pixels wide because there was just no design consideration for those in-between widths. Secondly, if you think about it, it really doesn't make any sense to only be designing for device screen sizes. That makes the assumption that people will only ever be seeing a site at the exact size of the screen of their device. So what happens if someone's viewing your site on a desktop and they have your site snapped up into one of the corners of their site, so it's only using a quarter of their viewport? Or if somebody's on a mobile device and they're using a split screen mode where they have one app on one side and one app on another. Now your site's only being viewed in half of the viewport size. So you can't assume that your site is going to be viewed at sizes that correlate with specific devices. You need to cover every possible width in between your site's maximum width and its minimum width. And the maximum width is the widest point at which the content that your site needs to present is still legible. If a site becomes too wide, then things get stretched out too much and it becomes difficult to read. And with the minimum size, you actually can think about devices because you can have a look at the tiniest device that you want to support with your site. So for example, it might be a watch. If you know that you want to support watches, then you might need to take your site width down to say 270 pixels or thereabouts. Or alternatively, you can determine the minimum width of your site the same way that you determine the maximum width. You can have a look at what is the smallest possible width that your site content remains legible. So you set those two fixed points and then you cover everything in between. All right, so then if you know you've got these two fixed points, you've got your minimum width and your maximum width, where do you start? How do you actually start the design process? 
So if you've been looking into this question already, then you've probably heard about the concept of mobile first. Mobile first is basically the suggestion that you start by creating a design that's catered towards small mobile devices, and then you progressively enhance your layout from there. This concept came up a fair while ago, but it's still something that we hear talked about a fair bit. And for that reason, you might be wondering if you should start your design at the maximum size end, something that you might hear referred to as your desktop layout, or if you should start it at the minimum size end, which is something that you might hear described as your mobile layout. The real truth is that it doesn't really matter anymore whether you start with a thin layout or you start with a wide layout. I'll explain why. The whole mobile first design philosophy came about as a way of overcoming the fact that mobile friendly designs used to be sort of an afterthought. People would focus on creating a wide layout, thinking only about desktop machines with no touch controls and often with minimal concern for load speed or performance. Then when they'd done this quote-unquote desktop version of their site, they'd make another version, which would be a kind of a watered-down, shrunk version of their desktop site that added in some support for touch interaction, but would often be too bloated to run well on low-powered mobile devices. So that mobile-first philosophy comes from a point in time when you had a fairly clear distinction between mobile and desktop devices. Mobile devices were low-powered, small size devices and desktops were high powered large size devices. But now it's very common to find a mobile device like a iPad, for example, that has a lot of processing power and it has a fairly high screen resolution. On the flip side, you can have a desktop device that's quite small and low powered like a Chromebook, for example. So it really doesn't make sense anymore to have this idea of large layouts that are for desktops and think that they don't need touch controls or solid performance. And conversely, it doesn't make sense to think that small size layouts are always going to be on touch devices and are always going to be on low powered devices. So now everything at every size needs to support touch control and mouse control, and they all need to be performant. All right, so then if we know that touch controls are necessary at all sizes and that optimization and performance is necessary at all sizes, then the only thing left that you could really be trying to apply a mobile first methodology to is the layout itself. And then that really boils down to a question of, do you start by designing your wide layouts first, which is what we would previously have thought of as desktop layouts, or do you start with your narrow layouts first, which is something we would previously have thought of as a mobile layout? Well, realistically, it doesn't actually make a huge difference anymore whether you start with your narrow layout or your wide layout, because you're going to be needing to think of all sizes of layouts as you create each element of a design. If you start a design thin, then as you're adding in each portion of that site, you're going to need to be thinking about what it's gonna look like at its maximum width. And the same thing goes in reverse. If you lay out something in its maximum width, then you're gonna need to have an idea in your mind about what you're gonna do with that content when it's shrunk down to its minimum width. So you can do either. You can start at whatever end you want as long as you're thinking ahead about how you're gonna handle each piece of content as you create it at various sizes. For me personally, I prefer to start with the widest layout. And the reason is the narrowest layout is pretty much always gonna be the same thing. It's pretty much always gonna be a single column. Like we talked about before, when there's not enough room to have multiple columns, everything has to go into a single column stacked one on top of the other. So there's not really many variables there to consider. Your thinnest possible layout is always going to be relatively similar to every other thin layout. But with your widest possible layout, there are all kinds of different ways that you can be handling your content. You have to consider how many columns you're gonna have in each section. You have to consider the width of those columns and you have to consider how your content is gonna be laid out inside your columns. So because there's more to think about there, I typically start with the widest and then crunch down to that thinnest point where I pretty much already know how everything's gonna need to be. But that said, You can totally do it the other way around if you prefer. As long as you have a plan for how you're going to expand things out, that's totally fine. So do you need to make sure that your thin mobile-friendly layouts are awesome? Yes, of course you do. But do you need to make your thin layouts before your wide layouts in order for that to happen? No, you can make awesome layouts that work across all kinds of devices at any time you want, in any order that you want. Just do whatever works for you. Just make sure that whatever width mock-up you're working on, you're always making sure that it's both touch and mouse friendly 
that it's going to be performant when it's deployed and that you know how that element is going to look at all the different widths that you need to cover. All right, so I'll just give you a quick summary of what you need to think about with your workflow. First up, when you're creating your artboards for a responsive design, don't just go with arbitrarily selected device screens. Instead, create an artboard that's going to show every major layout change that you need to show in order to indicate how you're going to keep your content legible at every width in between your maximum and minimum layout size. Don't just think about mobile first. Think about mobile always. There should always be touch controls and there should always be optimization. Start with your thinnest artboard if you want. Start with your widest artboard if you want. It doesn't matter as long as you're thinking ahead about how you're going to handle all the different widths that you need to accommodate. All right, so that is our responsive refresher done. Now we're ready to actually get into working with XD to create responsive mockups. So in the next section of the course, we've got seven lessons that are going to cover all of the XD specific functionality that you'll need in order to produce responsive designs. And in the section after that, we're going to go through a practical example of actually creating responsive artboards for a design. So in the next lesson, we're going to start with a quick overview of what you actually can do for responsive design in XD. XD is not a be all and end all for everything to do with responsive design, but there are some things that you can do really well with it. So we're going to cover what those things are in the next lesson. I'll see you there. Hey, welcome back to responsive design in Adobe XD. In the last section of the course, we just had a quick refresher on responsive design so that we know what we're actually trying to achieve as we work in Adobe XD. Now, as we're getting into using the software for this purpose, I'm just going to start with a quick overview of what you can actually do in XD and what you can't. And first up, I also want to mention that this isn't going to be a course on using XD as a drawing software. It's going to assume that you're comfortable with doing things like drawing out rectangles and creating groups and setting colors and things like that. If you need a primer on the basics of working with XD, then check out the links in the notes below this video. I'll give you some links to some courses that can help you with the initial getting started with XD. What we're going to be focusing on is specifically responsiveness in XD. So as we go through, we're going to skip over the process of actually laying out the shapes and text and what have you so that we can keep that focus on responsiveness. And anyway, some of the actual process of what we'll be going through can be a bunch of tweaking of sizes. And to be honest, you would get pretty bored watching me do all of that. So I will be jumping forwards from time to time to keep the focus on the pertinent points for responsiveness. All right, so about responsive design in XD. So the first thing that you need to be aware of is that you can't make a design in XD that is itself fully responsive. So if we have a look at this mock-up here, this is all just done in wireframe form, by the way, rather than trying to focus on a fully fledged design. I can preview this design and I'll get this that looks like a live website, but I can't, I can't shrink down the window and have it actually respond like a regular site. So it doesn't work like that. What you can do, however, is create a series of artboards that show how the design is going to look at every stage of the layout where something needs to change in order to keep everything fitting nicely in the design and looking legible. So the goal of this process is twofold. One, you want to communicate with the person who's going to be coding up the design exactly how you want this design to function. By creating a series of artboards like this, you have complete control over exactly how it's going to look at whatever width it's being viewed at. So as I was saying before, if you only produce, say, a 1024 mock-up for a tablet and a 320 mock-up for a phone, then the coder is going to have to guess what you want to have the design do at 500 pixels. By doing this multiple artboard approach, there's no guesswork and you communicate to them exactly what should be happening across the whole size spectrum. And the other thing that you're going to be able to do with these artboards is communicate with the client how things are going to look at different widths. Something that I'm going to show you later is once you've created a system of artboards like this, you can take one of these artboards and you can adapt it in about 30 seconds to any type of device preview that they want. So if a client says, hey, show me how this is going to look on the latest Samsung Galaxy that's at a resolution that nobody's ever used before, you're going to be able to cover that because you're prepared for any width that the site needs to work at. Now, something that's important to remember as you're going through this process is that this is not responsive development. This is not responsive coding. So you're not going to be able to do 
everything in the mockup exactly as it's going to be in the browser. You're probably not going to have spacing that's absolutely perfect to the exact pixel width that it's going to be in the site. And some dimensions might be slightly out compared to what they're going to be once the site is deployed. So don't feel like you have to get caught up too much with making things absolutely pixel perfect because the amount of fine tuning that you're going to have to do to get that point is going to take you more time than it's really going to be worth. In reality, when this is actually coded up in the browser, it's not going to be exactly the same pixel for pixel no matter what you do. So don't worry about that too much. You have three main goals that you want to focus on when you're doing responsive design in XD. And that is through your collection of artboards, you want to convey what you want to happen to the layout at various sizes to the coder. You want to be able to convey to a client or whoever you're designing for how the layout is going to look on any device that they might want to see a preview for. And you want to do both of these things in the least time consuming way you can. So achieving those three goals is what we're going to step you through in the next lessons of the course. And the first place that we're going to look to make that happen is XD's responsive resize functionality. This is a fairly new addition to XD and it's designed primarily to help you with that third goal of making this workflow move along in the least time consuming way possible. So in the next lesson, we're going to check out what responsive resize actually is and how you can put it to work in your mockups. So we'll see you in the next lesson. Hey, welcome back to Responsive Design in Adobe XD. In this lesson, we're going to check out Adobe XD's responsive resize functionality. This is a tool that you can use to help you speed along the process of adapting your content from one artboard into the next size artboard. So let's take a quick look at what it does. I'm just going to draw out just a regular square. And then over in the right side by here, you'll see that we have this responsive resize section and it's automatically turned on by default. So the first thing that you'll need to know is if you want to turn it off, just click that little toggle there to turn it off. So to show you what it actually does, I'm going to switch from automatic mode into manual mode. And in here, you can see that what we have is basically a system of constraints. These constraints are pretty much the same as constraints that you would see in other software. If you've worked with constraints before, it's really not that different. So in a nutshell, you've got constraints to control how far the object is from the edges. So that's these ones here. And you've got constraints that control the width and height of the object. So you have the ability to fix the width to a set width or fix the height to a set height. So the easiest way to communicate what these actually do is going to be to show you with some example shapes. So here we go. For example, we've got here two objects that both have responsive resize activated on them. And now if I shrink down the parent here, you'll see that the object on the right stays on the right. Or if I shrink the other way, the object on the left stays on the left. So if we go into the responsive settings for each of these by hitting manual, you can see here, this one is being told to maintain its position relative to the right hand edge. And this one is being anchored on the left side. Both of them have fixed width and height. And you'll also notice that these constraints were automatically applied. The object on the left was automatically told to anchor itself on the left and vice versa with the object on the right. And that Automatic application of constraints is what makes responsive resize different to constraints in other programs. In other programs, you need to manually apply constraints depending on what's appropriate for each object. But with responsive resize, XD will do its best to try to guess which constraints are appropriate for different elements. But sometimes it's actually going to guess wrong. And when that happens, you're going to need to turn off responsive resize. So just bear that in mind, if things are not responding how you expect them to, you might need to either go in and change these constraints or turn off responsive resize altogether. All right, we'll have a look at another couple of examples to show you more about how to work with responsive resize. I talked earlier about the fact that you want to have flexible columns wherever possible, and you can actually set up your artboards in XD to simulate flexible columns, which is something that we're going to go into more later. So I want to show you how responsive resize operates in relation to having those flexible columns. So by default, what we're looking at here simulates having a single column, so the dark rectangle inside a parent container. Now, when I resize this element, I've got responsive resize on, 
everything resizes quite well. So we've got basically the same as a flexible percentage-based div in a website layout, for example. Where it doesn't work so well is if you want to have two columns side by side. Now with responsive resize switched on, if I shrink things, you're going to get this issue where the boxes are protruding outside their parent element. So if you want to have a layout like this where you have two boxes inside or however many boxes inside and you want them to stay flexible, you want them to retain the ability to be resized, then you actually need to turn responsive resize off like I have here. With responsive resize off, then when you shrink the parent, you can see that the internal shapes are shrinking down as well. And with that, you can simulate having those fluid width columns. And another thing to consider when you're setting up for a fluid layout like this is how the box is going to respond if you resize the whole artboard. Because what we're going to be working towards is artboards where everything inside them can respond when you shrink the artboard down. So right now, if I turn on responsive resize on the artboard itself and shrink things down, so you can see that our little two column layout is shrinking down nicely, but that the amount of space on the left and right is also shrinking. So you can see here this, this amount of space is being preserved. That may be fine depending on whatever you're wanting to do with your layout. You might want to have spacing that adjusts along with the size of the parent. But if you don't want that, then what you can do instead is turn on responsive resize on the element like I have up here, go into manual and turn everything off except for the anchors for the left and right side. So what that says is to preserve the amount of space that's on the right side and on the left side. So now if I resize the artboard, now this container is shrinking down and its internal columns are shrinking down, but it's keeping the same size spacing at the outer edges. So that may be something that you want to do when you're working through creating your artboards. And one of the things that you might need to do as you're going along is to vertically shrink some of your elements. So you might need to vertically shrink elements like images, for example, so that you can maintain their aspect ratio as their width is going down in your design. So with this example here, I just have a rectangle with a little placeholder image here. And at the moment, if I resize this image, then the little thing that I've got inside is shrinking down as well. And that's going to happen whenever you have any object that's nested inside the object that you're shrinking down. So that's with responsive resize switched off. This is an example of where having it switched on can be really helpful. So this example, I have responsive resize switched off. I'm just letting it automatically apply the constraints that it wants to apply. And now with this image, if I shrink it down, then the internal object is keeping its size and shape. And then there is just one more thing that I wanted to show you, and that is that right now, responsive resize doesn't work on symbols. So this is just a couple of objects that I've converted into a symbol. So you can see this little symbol icon here shows us that this is a symbol, not just a regular group. But if I try resizing the artboard now, you'll see that that symbol doesn't respond in any way at all. And it won't matter what I do on the symbol level. I can turn off responsive resize on that symbol. And then if I shrink the artboard, it's still not going to make any difference. So what you actually need to do is ungroup the symbol so that you end up with the same shape but no longer in a symbol. You do that by just right clicking and choosing ungroup symbol. And then when you resize the artboard, then that shape is going to respond just like any other shape in your layout. So for the moment, that is probably going to slow you down a little bit. The whole point of symbols is that you can reuse them across multiple artboards. You are going to have to ungroup them for now if you want to use responsive resize on them. But Adobe have said that in a future update, responsive resize is going to work on symbols. So you just have to hold tight for a little while to get that functionality. All right, so when should you use responsive resize? So you should use it at the artboard level, like we have here, so that you can shrink down an artboard and have all the content inside respond to it. Similarly to how when you resize a browser, you can have the content inside respond. You can also turn it on when you have an element that you don't want to change size when the parent changes size. 
And another great place to use it is when you have an element that you want to anchor according to one of the edges. So you want it to keep its position relative to one of the edges. And you want to turn responsive resize off when you want to simulate a fluid width column. All right, so that is the essentials of how responsive resize work. Now you'll know what we're doing as we use it throughout our artboard creation process. And speaking of artboards, the next thing that we're going to cover is how to use artboards in XD in the context of responsive design. So we're going to step through that in the next lesson. I'll see you there. Hey, welcome back to Responsive Design in Adobe XD. In this lesson, we're just going to touch on artboards, the basics of using them, and how they relate to responsive design. There's not that much to cover, so this is going to be a fairly quick lesson. All right, so the first thing you need to know is the artboard tool is here. So you can just grab an artboard tool, and you've got a couple of choices. You can either draw out an artboard at the size that you need it. Once you've drawn it out, you can specify width and height here. Or the other way that you can create an artboard is you can select one of the presets down here for a specific device size. So let's say that you want to show how it's going to look on iPhone 6, 7, or 8. You just click the button here, and it's going to automatically create an artboard for you at the appropriate size. It's actually going to automatically place that artboard wherever it feels like. It doesn't really matter where your cursor is at the time that you hit one of these selections here. It's just going to line it up next to another artboard. So you might just need to move things around after you create them. Once you do create an artboard, you also have the ability to switch it from portrait to landscape mode. So this can be really great for creating mockups to show clients on how a design is going to look in different orientations. And then the other most significant part of XD artboards is the scrolling settings down here and the viewport height settings. So of course, usually a site is going to be bigger than the amount of space you actually have in a viewport. And you're typically going to need to drag out the height so that you can fit in all of your content. XD will give you this little dotted line along the bottom here that indicates the bottom of the viewport. So I'm just going to just put a big rectangle in here just to demonstrate what the purpose of this is. So now if I preview this artboard by clicking this play button here, it's going to allow me to scroll down past that point that I've specified with that little dotted line along the bottom of the viewport area. And I can actually drag this to a different spot and that's going to change how much of the design is visible in that preview before you need to scroll to see more of the content. So as I've already mentioned a couple of times, even though you do have all of these different device sizes here as presets, don't start your design with picking sizes out from this list. Rather, what you want to do instead is create a series of artboards based on the layout itself, what the layout needs. So these, which are examples we're going to go through later, these are all the points at which the layout needed to change in order to keep the content in it readable and fitting comfortably. So you want to go through, create a series of artboards like that, and then once you're done, then you can take these artboards, take the content from these artboards, and then you can quite easily fit that content into device-specific previews. So then you're going to have all of these breakpoints. This is the information that the coder needs, but you're still going to be able to go to a client or whoever it is that you're developing an interface for, and you're going to be able to say, this is how it's going to look in this Android tablet. And then you'll be able to show them the preview so that they have a clear understanding of what you're actually doing with the design. So as I said, that's just a quick lesson. There's really not that much to artboards but I wanted to cover those points because they are so fundamental to the process. And speaking of things that are fundamental to the process, we've talked about how fundamental working with columns is and how you should try to have your columns be flexible so that you can get as much life out of them as possible. So in the next lesson, I'm going to show you how you might set up a layout in an XD artboard that simulates flexible width divs in a production site. So we're going to go through that in the next lesson. I'll see you there. Hey, welcome back to Responsive Design in Adobe XD. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how you can use Adobe XD to emulate flexible width columns. As I mentioned, I'm not going to go through and show you square by square how to draw all of this stuff out. 
I'm going to keep the focus on showing you the most pertinent points of actually implementing this into your own workflow. So I've got a demonstration here. If I grab this outer element here and then I shrink it down, you'll see that everything inside shrinks down along with it. So what have we got? Let's look a little bit closer. So we've got a section that's set up to be a header. We've got another section that's set up here to be a hero unit. And inside the hero unit, there is a left column that's 50% width and a right column that's 50% width. Under that, we've got another section which is gonna be used to display a features type of area. A section here that's gonna be used to display an image slider. Then we've got an area here for main content. What we've got inside here is a representation of a left column and of a right column. And these actually have spacing around the outside as well. So this represents a sidebar that would be about 30% the width of the site minus spacing and a main column that would be about 70% width. And then we also have an area for the footer. So then you saw as I shrunk down the wrapper, the column that is supposed to represent 70% stays at about 70% and same thing with the 30% column. And the same thing is true with the 50-50 columns. They're both shrinking down automatically to go along with the parent. So there's a couple of things that go into creating a type of a layout shell like this. One is using rectangles and groups together. So a group in Adobe XD, like let's take our header, for example, you can see that it has a width and a height setting, but that width and height setting is determined by the content that's inside that group. So inside this group, I've put a rectangle and I've named it header div, and I'm giving it a specific height and width to indicate what size this part of the site should be. So if I was to increase the size of this rectangle, if I just dragged it out to be a little bit higher, it's gone to 380 height. Now, if I look at the group, now the group is also 380 height. So what you can do by putting rectangles like this inside groups is you can make it really easy for the coder to come along and look at each one of these sections. So we have a group representing each section of the site and they can have a look up here and see what the dimensions should be for each one of these elements of the site. And the other function of including rectangles that represent divs is they're gonna give you something to snap your content elements to. They're gonna work like guides, basically. Right now, Adobe XD doesn't actually have any guides. I'm sure they'll be coming in the future, but for now, you can use this system instead. So for example, if we go into our hero unit group, you can see that I've got a main rectangle that's representing the whole section of the site. Then inside that, I have a group for the left column that has its own rectangle inside it. And the same thing goes for the right column. So now when I wanna start adding content into this area of the site, let's say I just wanna include a rectangle and I do it inside this left column group. Now, when I move it around, now, you can see that it's snapping to the edges and it's working in basically the same way as it would if you had guides running down each edge of each one of these parts of your site. You can then also use these layout rectangles that you're putting in place for alignment purposes. So if I select this rectangle that I have representing a div and I select this rectangle that I have representing some content and I use these alignment tools, now, I can align this shape relative to the aspect of the layout that I'm working with. So it's a great idea to go through and set up rectangles like this to define each part of the layout of your site. So you can see all of those different rectangles there that give dimension to the groups that contain them and give you guide-like functionality. So the next thing to consider when you're setting up these layouts, just close all these down again, is when you should have responsive resize turned on and when you shouldn't. So if you remember, you wanna have responsive resize turned off. So if you remember from our quick overview on responsive resize, you can have it turned on when you've got a single column layout, but if you have a multi-column layout that you want to be flexible, you're gonna to wanna to turn it off. So I have responsive resize turned on for the header, which is single column but I have it turned off for this hero unit. 
And then the same thing goes down here. These are both single columns. So section one and section two, I have it turned on. But then for the main section here, double column, I have it turned off. And then finally the footer, I have it turned on. So just bear those things in mind. And then when you resize the parent item, then everything is going to be able to shrink and expand to fit. So there's a couple of extra quick tips that I want to give you for setting up a layout like this. One of the things that you can consider is while you're drawing things out, you might want to turn borders on just so that it makes it a bit clearer what you're working with. Another is that you can use mathematical functions inside Adobe XD to help you set up the right dimensions here. So this one's fairly easy. We've got two columns here and we want them to be 50% of the available width for each one. So we just look at our overall width. I have a site width here of 1200 pixels. So that's all pretty straightforward. But let's say for example, you want to lay out a five column grid. In that case, you could create a rectangle to represent a div left aligner, it'll snap to the outside of one of the rectangles that you already have in your design. Set it to the full width, in this case is 1200. And then you can actually do maths inside these fields. So if I know I want this to be one fifth of the overall width, then I can just enter in divide by five and then it will automatically do that calculation for me and shrink down the width. So an example of where I've used that is to create these elements here. I knew I wanted this to be 70% of the available width and I wanted this to be 30%. So I drew out a rectangle, snapped it to the left, set it to 1200. I wanted it to be 70%. So I multiplied it, put in a little star to do multiplication by 0.7. So that gave me an overall 70% width. I then knew that I wanted to have 40 pixels gap on the left side here and 20 pixels on the right. So then I just subtracted that 40 and 20 pixel amount. So I subtracted 60. That gave me the width that I needed. And then I was able to offset it from the left here. So the X position up here determines how far from the left this element is. So I knew I wanted it to be 40 pixels further to the right. So then I can add 40 pixels and hit enter. And then that gives me the alignment that I need. And then I can hold down shift while I'm dragging the shape to keep it stuck on the axis that it's already on. Snap that up to the top. And then I can do the same thing to offset it vertically. So then to the Y position, I want this a bit further down, so I'm going to add 60 pixels. And then I've got my alignment. So that is how you can lay out a series of rectangles that work like divs, and that's how you can get flexible width columns that simulate being based on a percentage width like they will be when they're coded up for the browser. That covers how you can create columns manually, but one of XD's coolest features is its ability to create a column system or a grid system rather automatically using the repeat grids functionality. This can be really, really helpful for quickly laying out content, but after you use it, you'll need to follow a couple of extra steps to make sure that the content that you've laid out is still gonna be responsive. So we're gonna check out how you can use repeat grids when you're making responsive mockups in XD in the next lesson. I'll see you there. Hey, welcome back to Responsive Design in Adobe XD. In this lesson, we're going to talk about using XD's repeat grid function to help you lay out content quickly, but then also make sure that it's set up in a way that's still going to be conducive to all of the responsiveness that you're trying to design for. So I've taken the layout that I showed you in the last lesson and just added in some placeholder content. As I mentioned, I'm going to be skipping over the actual design part because it's not really pertinent to responsiveness. There's nothing here that I've yet done specifically to help make this all responsive. I've just added in some rectangles and some text and you'll get this file. So you won't have to do this manually. You can just pick up from this point and follow along with what I'm doing. I am using a couple of placeholder elements here that have come from Envato Elements. So using this logo, these little image placeholders for the, the images in the wireframe 
and a couple of these social media icons. So they won't be in the actual file because I don't have the right to share those. But if you do want to grab them, the links are in the notes below this video. So I'll just quickly run through the content that I've added here. So in here, we've got a logo and title on the left and just a straight up text menu on the right. In here, we've got a placeholder image. And just like I showed you before, this is centered inside our sort of fake div. All right, we've got some text and a button that is left aligned in our little fake div. Here we've got just a heading and this little column. There are going to be three of these, which we're going to create with the repeat grid functionality. And I set up the width of these using that math function that I told you about in a previous lesson. This section is simulating a slider of images that are going to move from left to right. So we've just got one placeholder image in there. We'll repeat that out to five with the repeat grid functionality. Here we've got the main section. This will be sort of a blog area with an article on the left with image text and read more button. And on the right, we'll just have a little widget with a couple of different links. And then finally, we've got our footer down the bottom with another just ordinary text navigation bar, little copyright message and some social icons. And just to quickly show you as well, because of the way that this is all being set up, the way that we set up that layout in the last lesson, if the wrapper group here, the parent group is selected, this is already pretty responsive. There's some things that start to break and that's what we're going to address as we go through later lessons. But you can see that that's already pretty well responsive to get the ball rolling. All right, so now let's expand this content, this content, and this content out to multiple items by using repeat grid. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to grab this item here. It can be difficult to select things in XD. Sometimes an easy way to directly select an item that's nested inside other groups is to hold down control and then you can hover and it'll show you which item you're going to select. So then you click to select and it will sometimes drill you down too far, but then at least you're in roughly the right place. So what I actually want to select is this column group here. Now with this column selected, I can hit the repeat grid button up here. And now I can just drag this out so that I get three of these columns. Now by default, it's always going to give you a 20 pixel gap in between each one of your grid items. In this case, I want a 40 pixel gap between the items. So I'm just going to hover over the gap so that it goes pink. And then I'm just going to drag the right edge out until I hit 40. And so now, that's that grid is all set up and good to go. I'm going to do the same thing down here. I control clicked to get into the roughly right place in the layer structure here. So I'm going to select the column itself, hit repeat grid, and then drag out until I get five items. In this case, the 20 pixel gap is fine. And I can also do the same thing vertically with this item here. So once again, control click to get into roughly the right place. And then I'm going to select this sidebar snippet, hit repeat grid, and then drag down till I get six of these items. So now that is most of our content all set up. But right now, if I grab that wrapper again and I shrink down the size, you can see that the grid stuff is not shrinking along with everything else. So basically, Responsive resize is not going to work on elements that you've laid out using the repeat grid functionality. So to make that work, what you're going to have to do is come in and select the grid. Then you're going to have to right click and choose ungroup grid, or you can do the same thing up here. Now, if we try resizing, you can see it's still not working because there's another step that we have to take. We have to select all of these columns and they have automatically had responsive resize activated on them. So you remember I said that sometimes it's going to try to guess what you want with constraints, but it's going to be wrong. And then you're going to have to turn it off. So we're going to turn it off because we want our multiple columns to be flexible. And now when we shrink down, now everything is shrinking along with it. 
So then we want to do the same thing also for our other section. So in here, we're going to need to ungroup this grid. And then again, responsive resize has been switched on, but we don't want it. So we'll turn that off. Now, if we select the parent, these items will shrink down too. And then the same thing goes here with our sidebar. We're going to need to ungroup. In this case, responsive resize is already off. It's guessed correctly this time. And now when we resize the parents, now the sidebar items are resizing too. Now there's going to need to be further adjustments that we'll have to make to get everything working fully responsively. But that's one of the first things that we need to do to lay the foundation. And that is how you can use the repeat grid function to quickly get columns of content laid out in your site. But then you're going to need to go through and tinker around with the responsive resize functionality to get everything responding to the parent size the way that you want it to. Oh, and there is one more thing. You'll notice that when we, we resize this parent, the images in our placeholder go a bit funny. This is just placeholder, so it's not a big deal. But if you want to deal with that and prevent that sort of funny resizing from happening, then you can go in and select the image placeholder, turn on responsive resize, switch it to manual, make sure all the edge constraints are off and fixed width and height are both on. So I'm just going to do that with all of them. So that's all good. And then when you resize the parent, then those little placeholder images are going to keep their size. So that's just going to help you to keep everything looking neat. All right, so next up, you probably just noticed then that this text went funny when I resized everything. And there are actually a few different areas where the text is going a little bit weird as we shrink things down. There are a couple of different settings that you can use in XD to help your text stay more responsive. You're still going to have to make some manual adjustments, but these little changes are going to help you to minimize the number of manual adjustments that you need to make. So we're going to go through handling text in responsive design and XD in the next lesson. I'll see you there. Hey, welcome back to responsive design in Adobe XD. I just want to touch on a couple of quick points that are going to help you with handling text when you're creating responsive artboard mockups. Now, a lot of the time when you add in a heading like you've got here, it's going to automatically be added in point text mode as opposed to area mode. And the result of that is that when the parent is resized, so like this, the edges of the heading are going to protrude outside the edges of the parent. But what we would be better off with is something that can automatically keep itself inside the bounds of its parent. So one of the things that you can do with your text to help make the responsive process quicker and easier is after you've added it all in, go through and set it all to area mode instead. And then what you want to do is widen this container out to the outer edges of the parent, or at least to where you would have your padding around the outside. So here I can drag the left side out to line up with this edge of the content and the right edge here. And now when I resize the parent, now the text is always going to stay inside. So then the only thing that we'll have to do later is just increase the height of this box and gradually decrease the size of the text in order to make it fit vertically as well. But by making that one change, you prevent it from flowing outside horizontally. So I'm going to do the same thing up here with this heading, switch it into area mode and then drag out the right side. This setting here is already in area mode, so that's already handled. So just check each one of our headings. That's in area mode, so that's fine. And you just want to make sure that the outside of those bounding boxes is lined up with the outermost points that you would want that text to exist at. So then what you're going to do as you go through and you create narrower and narrower artboards to represent different breakpoints is you're also going to reduce the size of this text to make sure that it fits in. And as you do that, it's a really good idea 
to save out each one of your sizes in the assets panel here as a style. So for example, here we have a 60 pixel font size and a 73 pixel line height, and that is saved up here. So that gives you two advantages. One, you can then easily reapply anywhere else you need to have the same size font. And the other thing is, as you go through and create your different size mockups, your heading text is gonna get smaller and smaller. So by saving out each one of these different styles in this list here, when the coder comes along, they're gonna be able to see exactly which font sizes they need to have accounted for in the style sheet. And then there's just one more thing that I wanna point out, and that is that unless you have a very good reason, you shouldn't shrink your normal text to a size any lower than 16 pixels. It can be tempting to start to try to shrink this down so that your normal text will fit more comfortably in your layout, but that's generally speaking a bad idea. If you go lower than 16 pixels, you might be able to read it comfortably on say a medium sized desktop monitor, but small text is gonna be really hard to read on a little phone screen. And it's also gonna be really hard to read on a large desktop monitor where it's such a small fraction of the overall space. So even though you're gonna be changing your heading sizes down, you pretty much wanna leave your default font size the same at the largest size as it is at the smallest size. And then there is just one more tip that I wanna give you. And that is that no matter how small your headings get, try to make sure that they're always a bit bigger than your normal size text. Because otherwise you can get to a point where it's hard to distinguish between a heading and regular text. If you absolutely have to bring your heading size down to the same font size as your text, in order to fit it in comfortably, then at bare minimum, make sure that it's a heavier weight than your default size text. All right, so that is pretty much everything that you need to know to handle text in your responsive design process. Just a couple of quick tips. Now we're just gonna do one more thing before we move on to actually going through a practical example of creating breakpoint based artboards. We're gonna take this layout that you've already been working with and we're just gonna trim off the left and right sides so that we have an artboard that represents our site at its maximum width. That's only gonna take a couple of minutes, so we're just gonna go through that really quickly in the next video. I'll see you there. Hey, welcome back to Responsive Design in Adobe XD. This is just gonna be a really, really quick video to do the last thing that we need to do in order to move on to creating a series of breakpoint-based artboards. And that is, we're gonna take this layer that we've been working with so far and get rid of the empty space to the left and right of it and get it prepared to work as the base for all of the other artboards that we're going to produce. All right, so the first thing that we wanna do is select the artboard, which we can do by just clicking on the name up here. We know that 1200 is the maximum width of our site. So I'm just gonna enter 1200 in here on the artboard. Then I'm gonna to need to correct this alignment. So we we'll select the wrapper group that contains everything that's laid out here. And we're gonna go up to the X position and set that to zero. Now, right now, if I resize this artboard, it's just gonna clip the edges of the content that we have laid out. That's because at the artboard level, responsive resize is deactivated. Content has responsive resize turned on by default. Artboards have it turned off by default. So we're gonna to need to flick that switch, turn on responsive resize. And now when we shrink things down, all of the groundwork that we've done so far is going to start kicking into action. And the reason that we do this is because here we're going to be able to duplicate this artboard, shrink it down and look for the first point at which things start to break, the layout starts to break. Then we'll be able to make an adjustment there. Then we'll be able to duplicate it again, shrink, duplicate, adjust, shrink, and so on. So now you're across everything that you need to know on the technical side of things to use the functionality that's in XD. Now I'm gonna step you through a practical example where I show you how a collection of artboards for breakpoints is actually going to look when applied to this wireframe layout. So in the next lesson, we're gonna have just a really quick introduction to what it is that we're actually gonna be looking for when we're producing breakpoint based artboards and a couple of little things to be aware of as you're going through the process. So for that, I will see you in the next lesson. 
Hey, welcome back to Responsive Design in Adobe XD. In the last section of the course, we went through and covered all of the things specific to XD that can help you with the responsive design workflow. And now in this section of the course, we're going to run through some practical examples of how you would use this in implementation. So I already talked about how it's not necessarily the best idea to just pick some specific device sizes to try to target your mockups for. Rather, you need to cover everything between your maximum and minimum site width. And the way that you do this is by, if you're starting with your narrowest design, then you expand it and you adjust as you expand the design in order to make things work properly in the layout. Or if you're starting with your maximum width like this, then you shrink the design and you adjust things as you go along when you see that the layout is no longer working at that width. So you're going to be creating a series of artboards and each one of those artboards are then going to represent where a breakpoint should be used in the CSS for the site when it's coded up. So the way that we're going to do it is with each artboard, you'll select the artboard itself by clicking on the name of the artboard. You make sure that responsive resize is active and then you're just going to start shrinking until you see that something is looking wrong. And you can watch the width parameter up here so that you know at what width that breakpoint is, where it's starting to break down. So for example, I think that the first spot that we're starting to see things looking a little cramped is around here, because at this point, now this sidebar is starting to look a little too narrow. The content in here doesn't fit that well. And we're gonna fix that up in the next video, but I just wanted to show you an example of what kind of things that we'd be looking for. And you know, as we continue to shrink down, we're gonna see things like, the menu not having enough room here and eventually there won't be enough room for all of these columns so we're going to correct for that as we go along. So just a couple more things to mention. One is that even though we've got a whole bunch of things automatically adjusting themselves on their width we're still going to need to manually update the height of certain elements so as you can see when I shrink down this artboard these images are keeping the same height so you're going to have to go in and manually reduce the height of those elements to make sure that they're retaining the same aspect ratio as they started out with. So that's just something you're going to have to do manually. Maybe in the future, there'll be the ability to lock aspect ratio of elements when they're shrunk, but it's not there just yet. And another thing that you're going to have to do as you're changing up the width of your layouts is you're going to have to get into your text boxes here and you're going to have to expand the height so that you can see all the lines of the text. So those are just a couple of things to think about as we're going through this process. As I mentioned before, I'm not going to actually go through and show you the process of resizing every individual box and making every individual change because that's going to get pretty boring for you pretty quickly. I've already done these all in advance. So what I'm going to do is show you the process of identifying where the layout breaks. And then I'll jump forward to showing you how the solution to that breakage is implemented in a breakpoint artboard. So the next video is going to be our first breakpoint, which is going to be at about a thousand pixels wide, where we're going to fix up the width of this column here being a little too cramped. So we're going to deal with that in the next video. I'll see you there. Hey, welcome back to Responsive Design in Adobe XD. We're now about to go through a process of demonstrating what a series of breakpoint artboards can look like in practice. So we're just working with our wireframe layout that we've been looking at so far during the course. And as I mentioned in the last video, what we're doing is just gradually shrinking down the layout and then looking for the point at which the layout is no longer really working very well. And the first place that it jumps out at is around this width, where there's really not enough room for these elements in the sidebar anymore. And for the sake of just keeping things round, I'm gonna say that that's a thousand pixels because that's, that's near enough. So I'm gonna undo that width change and then the process is gonna be just to hold down the Alt key and then drag this artboard over so you can duplicate it that way easily. Rename it. We know this is gonna be a thousand pixels wide. So then that will help to communicate to the coder that that's where that breakpoint needs to be in the CSS. And then we can make sure that responsive resize is active and change the width to 1000. Accidentally shrunk that too much. I'm just gonna put that back to 1200. So we're preserving that breakpoint layout too. So now here is where we can start to implement those adjustments that we talked about. So down the bottom here, in order to make more space for this sidebar, we wanna increase the size of this column and decrease the size of this column. 
And because we set up our fake divs over here, the process should be relatively straightforward. So now because of the way that we have everything set up, what I can actually do is just select the group for this left column and I can just reduce its width. So I can just shrink that down to 600 pixels. And then that's reduced the size of everything inside the group as well. And then I can do the same thing with the right column group. We took 50 pixels away from the other column. So we're going to add 50 pixels to this column. So I'm going to bring that to 300. And then to move 50 pixels to the left, I'm just going to hold down shift and hit the arrow key five times. So then that has given us a lot healthier an amount of space for these items that are in the sidebar. So that's the main thing that needed correcting at this first break point, just a, a pretty simple adjustment. And then the other thing that's going to have to be done is just going through and making adjustments to things like the aspect ratio of this image so that we square it off again. We need to make sure that text boxes show all the text inside them, fix up these images, their aspect ratio, and then the same thing down here, just making sure that all of that text is showing in there as well. So when you've gone through and done that, you're going to end up with a result that looks like this. So there we go. This is our thousand pixel breakpoint artboard. We've got our wider sidebar and everything else has been updated and corrected. All the text is showing. The aspect ratio of the images has been updated. So now that shows the coder everything that they need to see to know how this design should look at a thousand pixels of width. Now we're ready to move on to the next breakpoint, which is going to be required at 900 pixels. And I will show you why in the next video. I'll see you there. Hey, welcome back to Responsive Design in Adobe XD. We're now going through the process of setting up artboards to represent each of the breakpoints that needs to happen in this design in order to preserve the legibility of the layout. In the last video, we created a thousand pixel wide artboard, and now we're ready to find the next place where the layout starts to fail and break down. So just like we did before, we're gonna select the artboard and start shrinking it until we see things starting to break. So as we start to shrink this down, you can see if you watch the menu up here that it's starting to get pretty cramped. There's not a lot of room in there. And that's starting to happen at around about 900 pixels. Like if you wanted to be really up against the margin, you could probably close it down a little bit more. But you know, you also have to remember that menus can contain different types of items in them as they're changed over time. So to give it a little bit of slack, I would say we want to kick in an adjustment to that menu at about 900 pixels. And the other thing that we're seeing around here that could be adjusted is the width of the columns in the hero unit. It's starting to get a little bit cramped for the actual written content here. So it's probably going to be a good idea for us to shrink the size of the column that contains the image to make more space for this written content instead. So then once again, it just be a matter of resetting the width of the current artboard that you're working on back to a thousand in this case, duplicating the artboard and shrinking it down to the width that we've identified it needs to go to, and then making your adjustments inside this artboard. And one thing to bear in mind here is that as you start to push down some of this content, so we're going to take this horizontal menu and we're going to turn it into a vertical menu where all the menu items are stacked one on top of the other, and the increasing height of these text boxes is going to start to push things down. So what you're probably going to end up needing to do is increase the size of the artboard vertically. And to do that, you're going to need to turn off responsive resize because at the moment, if you drag down the height of this artboard, everything is going to stretch. You don't want that. So you need to flick that switch and then you'll be able to drag out the height of the artboard without anything else inside being updated as well. And don't forget that as you go along, you also want to update the height of the wrapper div rectangle so that it matches the height of your artboard or vice versa. One of the things that you might also end up doing is expanding the height of each one of these elements as you need to, then pulling out this wrapper div rectangle to the right height, wherever it needs to be to match up with all the other content. And then looking at its readout here and using that to tell you how high the artboard size should be. And as you can see, I have a version of the 900 pixel artboard that I already completed earlier. 
So the horizontal menu has now been replaced with a little hamburger icon and we've just got individual menu items stacked one on top of the other. In the hero section here, we've now increased the size of this right column so that there's more room for the text content and decrease the size of the left column so that it's not taking up so much space. And then we just went through and did the other housekeeping tasks that I described earlier. So the aspect ratio of the images has been adjusted to keep it fairly consistent. And the text boxes have all had their size increased to make sure that we can see all of the text that they contain. So now that is everything that we needed to do for the 900 pixel breakpoint. In the next video, we'll move on to the next breakpoint at 700 pixels. I'll see you there. Hey, welcome back to responsive design in Adobe XD. We're carrying on with our process of setting up artboards to represent each one of the breakpoints that need to exist in our layout. This is our 900 pixel artboard, the last one that we made. And now if we start to continue shrinking things down, now you can see that things are starting to getting a bit too cramped down here in the main section. At this point, there's really not enough room anymore to have these two columns and have the content of them be legible in both of those columns. So what needs to happen here is we need to discard a column and start stacking this content one item on top of the other. So what we wanna do is take our left column, expand that out to be full width, and then take our right column, put that down underneath and expand that out to be full width as well. So we're gonna do that at about 700 pixels. In this case, actually, we'll just reset this artboard back to its 900, and then we'll repeat that same process, hold down Alt, drag the artboard out, and set its width to 700. Now, if we take a look at our main section here, we'll just temporarily hide our right column. And what we're gonna do here is just drag the width of this column out. So that's basically the easiest way that we have to just turn this into a full width column. And then we're going to need to actually increase the height. Let's rename this to 700 while I'm here. Turn off responsive resize, and we're just gonna drag out the height here so that we've got more room. And now we can grab the footer and just move that down out of the way for now so that we can turn our right column back on and move this down here so that it can be placed underneath what was the left column. Now you can see that that looks a little bit funny here. We probably don't need a whole full width column for each one of these items. So instead, what we're gonna set up is a two column layout for these items with three items on the left column and three items on the right column. And to do that, what we can actually do is use that repeat grid functionality again. Just jump in here and delete all of these items except for the first one. And we're also going to drag out the size of our diff to make more space. Just make this about half of the width in here. This is just a rush job, just to show you the general idea. You'll need to do this a little bit more carefully in practice. And then you can just use repeat grid to get your two by three layout. And then like we went through before, you'll need to ungroup those and turn off responsive resize to make sure that they work properly. Then once you've adjusted everything here, then you can bring the footer back up to sit flush with the bottom of this section of the site. And you can adjust the overall height of the rapidive rectangle and the artboard. When you've done that, you're gonna get something that looks like this. So there we've got our main section is full width now and our footer is back aligned with everything. And then I've also gone through here and once more adjusted all the aspect ratios, the text boxes, etc., etc. Now the other thing that you'll notice here is that compared to the previous breakpoint, the text size has been adjusted because once we started getting down to this 700 pixel width, you can see that this heading here is a little bit too chunky for this amount of space. It's taking up too much area. And the same with this text here. Most of these headings are a little bit too big. 
So we've gone through and reduced the heading sizes of all of the headings. And like I mentioned before, each one of those text sizes has been added in here as a character style. So that finishes up the 700 pixel breakpoint. I'll see you in the next video for the 500 pixel breakpoint. Hey, welcome back to Responsive Design in Adobe XD. In the last lesson, we set up this 700 pixel breakpoint artboard. Now let's take a look and see where the layout starts breaking down at a width narrower than this. So if we start shrinking down around about here, now this is really starting to look too cramped. I don't think that there's enough space to really warrant two columns in the hero unit anymore. So what needs to happen here is this image needs to be taken and put at the top of this hero unit area. And then this content should be put underneath it. We're also starting to get a little too cramped with this image slider here. There's not really enough room here for five of these images to be shown. In this concept, the idea is that the images would be sliding from left to right. So instead, we're going to change this up so that it shows three images in this row instead of five. And then we're also going to tweak some of the heading sizes as well. So you can see that this text here is looking a little bit too cramped for the amount of space, the section one heading. These column headings are also a little bit too cramped in. And this heading size here is looking a little uncomfortable too. And we're also gotten to a point where these columns that are in section one are too thin. The text lines are starting to look really skinny. There's not enough words per line. So we're gonna collapse that down as well so that we have just one column in the section one area. And then the last thing that needs to be adjusted here is that at 500 pixels, this is probably starting to get a bit cramped too. And that could deal with being collapsed down into a single column. So as we did on all the other ones, you just need to duplicate the artboard and make those changes. And when you do, you'll end up with an artboard that looks like this. So we've got the image for the hero unit on top now with the content below it. So that makes it a lot more comfortable for that content to fit in. We've got the reduced size heading here. And now we're stacking each of these features or whatever would be in this space, one on top of the other. So now there's a lot more words per line and that's gonna make that a lot more comfortable to read. Our images here, we've reduced these down to having three visible in the row at a time. Decrease the size of the heading text in the main section. And we've collapsed our two columns of little snippet items here down into a single column. So interesting to point out as well, you can see that at this point, except for these three images here, almost the entire layout is now into a single column. So that's what we were talking about before, where as you have less and less width, you're gonna have fewer and fewer columns until you get to the point where everything is just stacked one element on top of the other. So now we've only got two more breakpoints to go. The next one is gonna be at 400 pixels and I'll show you what we'll be doing there in the next lesson. I'll see you there. Hey, welcome back to your responsive design in Adobe XD. What you're looking at here is the 500 pixel breakpoint artboard that we prepared in the last lesson. We've only got a couple more breakpoints to go, so let's see where they need to be put. So once again, we're shrinking this down to see where it starts to break. And I'm gonna say that it starts to break fairly soon. This is something that happens as the width decreases. You're going to need a few more breakpoints closer together at narrow widths. So here, there's a couple of things that I think need to be adjusted. One, if you look at the logo here, this is now starting to be cramped. So we need to shrink this logo to make sure that it can fit comfortably. We'll fix up this alignment and everything. That's just those little housekeeping tasks that we talked about. There's also no real reason to keep this in two columns now. So we're gonna take these images and put them above this content. So everything in this section is all collapsed to a single column. Here, there's not enough room for three images, but I think that we can still fit two images side by side fairly comfortably. We're gonna to need to make some adjustment to text sizes, again, to the headings. And then if we look at the bottom, we're now actually starting to see these elements overlapping one another. So we're gonna to need to take this copyright message and put it in the middle of the footer and take these social icons and put them at the bottom. So with all that done, we end up with an artboard that looks like this. So we've got our shrunk logo. Everything in this section has been adjusted just that housekeeping type of thing. We've got all of the content here is centered. 
So we've got the image is centered and the heading is centered. And now everything is in one big stack so that there's more room. Our images here have been reduced to two columns instead of three. Oh, and one other adjustment is here. I've centered this button instead of putting it to the left. And the reason is at this size, if this button is on the left, it actually just kind of looks like it's supposed to be centered, but it hasn't been done very well. So it looks a little bit more natural if it's centered at this width. And then looking at our footer, everything here is now stacked in a single column with all of that content also being centered. And now we are just about done. Now we're getting down into the smaller sizes that anyone is realistically ever going to see your site at. We're already smaller than some phones. You could arguably stop catering for devices at about 320 pixels if you wanted to. But what we're going to do in this case is we're going to have a look at these sizes here and pick out the smallest one, which is the Apple Watch at 272 pixels wide. So we're going to put that final smallest breakpoint together in the next lesson. I'll see you there. Hey, welcome back to Responsive Design in Adobe XD. In this lesson, we're looking at the very smallest breakpoint artboard that this design is going to need. As I mentioned in an earlier lesson, you can determine your smallest size either by picking a really tiny device that you want to target. So in this case, we're going to go with the Apple Watch at 272 pixels wide, which is very, very narrow. So if you can make your site work at that width, then you're doing pretty well. Or you can look at the actual content of your site and decide what is the minimum width that this content can still actually work for. And then just say, well, after that, it's too narrow and we're not really going to focus on trying to support anything smaller than that. So there's actually not much that we need to do at this stage because everything's already in a single column. So I'm just going to duplicate this artboard. We already know what size we want to target. We want to go with 272 pixels wide. So as you can see, because of the way we've set everything up, everything already looks pretty good. All that really needs to happen in here is just tweaking and tidying up of text boxes, correcting of aspect ratio and images and things like that. But there is one thing that does need to be fixed, and that is that this button is now too large to fit in this space. Now, if you have a look up here, you can see this is the icon that represents a symbol because I've been using a symbol to place this button throughout all of my artboards so far. But as long as this button is still a symbol, I'm not going to be able to resize it. So what I'll have to do instead is right click and choose ungroup symbol. And then that's going to completely separate these items that comprise this button. So you also are probably going to want to hit control G to group them back up again just to help you keep things organized so that this is still visible in your layers panel as a button. And then we're going to be able to shrink down the button to a size that fits for this layout. So that is pretty much it for what you're going to need to do at this size. The rest, as I said, is just the little tweaks and adjustments. And when those tweaks and adjustments are done, you will get this. So here our button fits well. Everything is all stacked in one great big column. Everything fits pretty comfortably and no element of the layout is broken. And with that, all of our breakpoint artboards are done. So we started out with just a basic layout. We added in the content. We then created a base artboard that would be the full width of our site. Then we produced gradually narrower artboards so that everything between our minimum width here at 272 and our maximum width here at 120 is completely accounted for. So now there should be no surprises. There should be no point in between breakpoints where anything falls over and the layout doesn't work. And the coder has all the information that they need to make the site look in the browser how you've designed it in XD. So that's all of the breakpoints covered. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can also make device specific artboards because sometimes that's just easier for communication with a client or whoever you're building the site for. It's probably not going to be terribly meaningful to them to say, here's the 900 pixel breakpoint artboard, but you can definitely say to them, here's how this is going to look on an iPad, or here's how this is going to look on a Nexus 7. And because you've got all possible widths covered 
with these artboards here, it's very easy to then pick any size device that you want and quickly just adapt one of these artboards into that device size. So I'll show you how to do that in the next lesson. I'll see you there. Hey, welcome back to Responsive Design in Adobe XD. We just finished producing a whole range of breakpoint based artboards so that we have our layout fully controlled whatever width that needs to be at. However, sometimes you're still gonna to wanna to be able to create previews for clients or whoever else to show how this design is gonna look on specific devices. So I've got the artboard tool selected here and really I can pick any one of these presets. So let's say for example, we might start with the Surface Pro 3. Now I'm just gonna grab that and move that around here. So as you can see, this layout is already wider than our widest, so there's not really any challenge to make that fit. So I'm just gonna turn this onto portrait mode. We can see here that the width is 960 pixels. So what we wanna do is choose the breakpoint layout up here that is just a little bit bigger than the device that we wanna preview. So in that case, this would be the 1000 pixel layout. So we wanna get into that layout, select the wrapper element and copy then go into our device specific preview and paste our content into that artboard. Then we can just shrink it down to fit. And because we've made everything to be flexible and adaptable, that's all we need to do to get that to fit into this artboard. Then the only remaining thing is to make sure that the artboard itself shows all the content that we have in here. So for that, we just need to drag out the artboard to the right height. And now if we hit this play button, we have a preview of how this is going to look on the Surface Pro. So this is actually a little bit too large for this area. So I'll just shrink this down to show you. So that's giving us a preview of our whole site at this size. And we can do that for any size of device that we wanna show a preview for. So let's pick another one. Let's go with say the iPhone 6, 7, 8. And we're gonna flip that one around as well. This one is 667 pixels wide. So let's see which of our layouts would fit best into it. The 700 pixel layout would go pretty well. It's just a little bit bigger. So we're just going to go in to the layout, select the wrapper, copy the content, and then just paste that straight into the iPhone, shrink it that tiny bit to make it fit, and then just expand the artboard so that it contains the whole design. And now we have a preview of how this would look on an iPhone. So that is all you're gonna to need to do whenever there's any requests to see how it's gonna look in any device at all, you're ready to go. You haven't just designed for a couple of devices, you've designed for everything. So now you're really adaptable and whatever anybody wants to see, you can put together a demo at a moment's notice. And that wraps up our course on responsive design in Adobe XD. We just have one more video, I'm gonna quickly summarize everything you've learned so you can come back and watch the final video anytime you need a refresher on how to do responsive design in Adobe XD. So I will see you in the final video. Hey, welcome to the final video in responsive design in Adobe XD. I'm just gonna try to cram everything that you've learned into a nutshell. So whenever you want a refresher, you can just come back and watch this video. All right, so first up, we covered a quick refresher on what responsive actually means. It all boils down to just two things and that is controlling your columns and controlling the content inside those columns. As for your overall workflow, you don't really need to think about mobile first because you really have to be thinking about mobile always across all sizes. And you always need to be making sure that you include both touch controls and mouse controls and everything needs to be designed with optimization and performance in mind. So if your overall workflow, figure out the smallest width that you're gonna have and the widest width that you're gonna have and start at either end, but just make sure that you cover the entire spectrum of widths in between those two ends. As far as the specifics for Adobe XD, remember that this is not responsive development, it's just responsive mock-up creation. So you can't make things pixel perfect like they are in the browser. So your job, your goals that you're trying to focus on 
like communicating to the coder where the breakpoints should be and how you want the site to respond at every different size. You want to also be able to communicate to a client how things are going to look on various devices. And you want to do both of those things in the most efficient possible way. One of the things that you can do is use the responsive resize function, which is a lot like constraints in other programs, with the difference being that XD will try to figure out which constraints you want to have applied to which elements. Sometimes it'll guess correctly, sometimes it won't. So you just have to keep an eye on it and tweak the settings as necessary. Basically, you want to have responsive resizing switched on at the artboard level so that you can have fluidly scaling content inside the artboard. You want to have it turned on whenever you've got elements that you want to have anchored on the right or the left, or when you have things that you need to stay at a fixed size when their parents are changed. And you want to turn it off when there are child elements of whatever it is that you're resizing that you want to remain flexible, like with a flexible column layout. In XD, you can use artboards to represent multiple different widths. And you can also use those artboards to test where a layout breaks by setting them up so that the whole design will shift as you resize that artboard. Within an artboard, you can set up an emulation of flexible percentage-based columns. While you're doing that, you can also use rectangles inside groups to simulate all of the divs that are going to make up the actual design. And these can also serve the function of acting like guides so you have something to snap to as you're trying to position your content. And you also have something that you can align your content relative to as well. You can use the repeat grids functionality to quickly produce multi-column and multi-row layout elements in your site, but you'll then need to ungroup that repeat grids area that you've set up and turn off responsive resize if you want that space to be able to stay flexible when you're resizing the artboard that it's in. When it comes to working with text, often you're going to want to take point text and turn it into area text and expand the bounds of the area that that text is in, and that will help it to resize with the width of the page. And it's a good idea to add a text style to your document for all of the different sizes that you're going to have your text at. That helps you to be able to easily reuse that style at multiple places throughout your mock-up. And it also helps to communicate to the coder what font sizes need to be used in the style sheet. So then with that information about how to use Adobe XD in a responsive context, you can go ahead and create a series of artboards that represent each of the breakpoints that your layout is going to need to have. So wherever the layout needs to be adjusted in order to stay legible, that's when you create a new artboard. So if you're starting from a wide layout, as you go along, you're going to gradually need to collapse multiple column layouts into single column layouts. So just keep going through, adjust the artboards until you see a break, make a new artboard, change up the layout, and then keep going until you've covered the entire spectrum from your widest possible layout down to your thinnest possible layout. And that is everything. So I hope that helps to make the process of responsive design for mockups in Adobe XD a lot smoother and straightforward for you. Maybe you even picked up a couple of new things about responsive design in general. Thank you so much for taking this course and I will see you in the next one.